Drone Vlog number 10. Hey everyone, it's Adam and Jay from the AeroWorks Workshop and uh, it's been a while since we've done a vlog. Yes it has, we've been traveling. Where have we been? We've been in the state of Wisconsin, we actually traveled like 1,700 miles in about maybe five days and never yep. left the state. <laughs> exactly. We went all over to little towns all over the state, places that I've never seen before. Uh, we captured some really cool aerial footage and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. We did. It was a good trip. Now, speaking of traveling, I know you travel a lot. I do. And in my travels, I've been, I don't want to take my Phantom 4 on vacation, but I would like to get some good uh, videos and just stuff going, pictures even. And I don't want to take a big drone and... And, well, guess what? You are in luck because this week, well, over the last couple of weeks, actually, the major three drone manufacturers all released new models. They did. We have Unique, who released uh, a small little guy called the Breeze, which is a tablet or mobile device driven uh, copter. We have uh, GoPro, which just this week released the Karma, which was almost a year in the, in the making. With folding arms. Folding arms. And then we have DJI coming out with the Mavic in the next week or so. All of them fall into that portable or compact. Uh, I think the DJI one was kind of pushed towards maybe even a pocket racer or something. We're not sure. We've seen some leaked photos of that. What do you think about the models? I, I like them all. They're all good in their own respects, but uh, it's going to probably be a price, uh, price point where you have the Breeze is the least expensive, and from what we hear, the Mavic is going to be on the upper end of that. Yeah, I see the Mavic being somewhere between uh, slightly above the P4 and uh, below the Inspire. I think it's going to have probably some form of light bridge built in. We've already seen a gimbal on there. Um, it does have the folding arms. Uh, the GoPro looks promising, although you're still relying on a GoPro camera, which is additional, so kind of have to see and how that all plays out. Hopefully they got the edges a little softer on the five. Exactly. You know? It looked like it from some of the sample videos. It did. It didn't look as curved. Yeah. So, so we're in the middle of September here, and we're already into, this is September 21st, right. and so we're about almost a month into part 107 being active, or at least being able to take the test. And we know from some of the results that came out this week that uh, people are passing the exam, which is good. We've got about an 87.88% pass rate. Which is pretty good. If you figure at 5,124 people taking it in three weeks, that's a pretty exactly. good rate. It's pretty good. I mean, it, and it's something that we said a long time ago when the 107 came out that the test shouldn't be taken lightly. It is something you actually have to study for. And we're actually going to be doing a review on some study uh, courses and some materials in a future vlog. But yeah, if you're going to be practicing or studying for your 107, definitely go out there and check out uh, some of the study guides that are on there. We have one on our academy site. Uh, one of the big sections is the sectional course, charts. sectional charts, lat long, airports. And that seems to be one that a lot of people are having trouble with. And we put together a, an academy course on our academy site that covers sectionals. Um, a lot of other good free media out there as well. The FAA has some study guides. You want to make sure to read through all that. Don't go in and take the test and just think it's going to be a, a it, quick, easy test. It's not easy. It's 60 yeah. questions, and most of the people that are, you know have even checked it out know it's it's not like everybody thought it was going to be, yay, who, I'm going to go get my license. Right. It's, it's And it's, I think with the 600 and some people have failed it so far, so you know comparatively to the numbers of pass, it's, that's not too bad, but... Keep in mind, if you spend 150 bucks, you got to wait two weeks to take it again. Not something you want to go out and shell 150 bucks every couple weeks to take the test. Yeah. So take the time up front and either take a study guide, take somebody's course, and do your due diligence and 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 study for the class so that you can pass the first time. You only have to get a 70, which you know it's kind of like to be a little higher. You don't yeah. want to go to a doctor that only passes exactly. 70 percent too. We so. used to say that in the aviation world. Do you want? <laughs> You know, you're flying on Delta somewhere. You want to know that that pilot passed with a 70, you know. So, you know, in, in the aviation world, when you pass with a 70, yeah, you passed your written exam. But when you go to take your flight exam, they look at that number and they say, well, this guy needs to brush up a little bit. They don't do that on the uh, UAS course. But what they do do, and we've seen a lot of people posting their exam like, hey, I passed. And then you see all those PL codes at the bottom. Those are all the sections within the FAA's test that you didn't pass. 
and you can actually take those codes and put them into Google or on the FAA site and look those up to see what areas. They won't tell you what question you failed, but they will say, well, this was one on weather or this was one on airspace. So make sure you go ahead and look those up so that you can get through and pass the ones that you didn't pass the first time. Although all you need is that 70 to pass. But we're always learning, so that's good. You and hopefully wanna... it's not the last time you're going you're exactly. to continue education and hopefully educate yourself more as time goes on. And that's something we've said, too, is it is an education process. It's not just a hurdle. It's not like, well, i got to take my 107 so I can fly drones. It should be something you want to learn. You want to know about airspace and airports and where I can and can't fly, and it just makes us all safer. Right. Yep. So what do we got on the table here? Well, this is pretty slick. We don't yeah. see a lot of fixed-wing airplanes around. Uh, but we were able to pick up one of these uh, Parrot Discos, and we're going to do a full review outdoors later. But I tell you what, as someone who's flown fixed-wing aircraft, this is a sweet little machine. Uh, it's got a built-in autopilot on board. It's got a pitot tube. It's got GPS. And it actually has something inside called Chuck. And that little orange box there is everything. That's your flight controller. That's your 32-gig memory card. It's your camera control, ESC, speaker, everything's in there. Um, and basically, you charge up the battery, you plug it in, you push the on button, you get a green light, which means you're ready to take off. And then using either the sky controller uh, or your goggles, you, well, you do have to use a sky controller either way, but you can view it either with a mobile device right on here, similar to how DJI and the other companies do it. Or you can put on your goggles and actually have a, an FPV first person view uh, mode. But basically you push this, the launch button, the motor kicks up, you throw it in the air and it goes right up to about 150 feet and just starts to orbit around. And it's pretty impressive. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to fly. You flew it once. I did, yeah. It, um, was, it was very nice. Easy to fly and uh, the distance is amazing on this thing. Yeah, we've, we've actually taken some pretty long distance runs with it um, out over some cornfields that were unpopular areas. And uh, it, it flew great. Um, it's pretty basic controls. If you're not moving the sticks, it basically flies straight and level. If you want to go up, you pull back. If you want to go down, you push down. And it, it handles everything else. It handles the wind, it handles the motor speed and everything. So stay tuned for a review on this. It's a really fun aircraft if you're looking at getting into fixed wing. Um, I wouldn't call it a, a mapping machine per se, or you know even a videography machine, but it does produce some pretty nice 1080p video. Um, and it's pretty stable. It's got image stabilization. It's kind of digitally, um, so it doesn't have a gimbal in there. But it flies great. Um, it comes apart, and it's pretty easy to use. And a 45-minute flight time, or up to 45 minutes with it. So definitely check that out if you're interested in getting into fixed wing. Yep. And here again, don't forget we have the logbook uh, for all you pilots. Yeah, if you're flying 107 or 333, um, there's been a little bit of debate over whether or not you need to log your flights, but I can tell you as someone, we, we fly commercially uh, every week, and you'll want to keep a log of everything you do because it's, it's good for many reasons. One, you keep a log of how much time is on your aircraft. Two, you keep a log of how much flight time your individual pilots have, which as we get down the road, just like with any aviation rating, you have to prove how much flight time you have. This can also be good for things like getting an insurance quote. If you say, well, I've got, you know, I don't know, maybe 100 hours of flying, they're like, well, how do you know? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I do. Or if you can say, well, we keep a logbook of every flight we do. We have every flight logged in there. We know how much time is on our aircraft. All of our pilots are logged in here. We also have a spot in here for maintenance records. So if you do any major uh, maintenance to your aircraft, you can note that in there. And if the FAA comes to your company and says, hey, we want to see your records, um, you know, the DJI Go app doesn't always cut the cut the mustard, so to speak, because, again, those apps only work when you're flying in those apps. We fly a lot of times where we're flying in another third-party app, and it doesn't get recorded in the Go app. So, a uh, good way to do it, the old pen and paper method, we've been doing it for years with manned aircraft, um, now we're doing it with our UAS aircraft. So check that out, you can check it out at uavchecklist.com, or we'll put a link down in the description. And we're good to be happy to be back. Happy Hopefully, be back. we'll be doing some more reviews. We've got our uh, M600 RTK just about ready to fly. Uh, we've already flown the M600 without it. We did. But we're getting through the last little bugs and trying to fly with the RTK, so stay tuned for that. We'll have a video on the uh, Parrot uh, Disco drone and, and a lot of many other things. Lots of accessories, chargers, all kinds of good stuff. we got all kinds of stuff we've been behind on, so we'll get up on that.
So stay tuned for that, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, giving us a little break off the video for a while, <laughs> but we're back, and uh, we'll see you uh, shortly. And good luck with your testing. Yep. Yeah.